Hypertension means a persistently raised pressure within a space. In this case, the blood vessels, specifically the arteries, typically shown as two numbers. The top number is known as the systolic blood pressure and reflects the pressure within the arteries during systole, meaning when the heart is contracting. The bottom number is the diastolic blood pressure, the pressure in the arteries when the heart is relaxing. Depending on where you look, there are different cutoff points that define hypertension. The American Heart Association defines a normal blood pressure as less than 120 millimeters of mercury systolic and 80 millimeters of mercury diastolic. They consider it elevated if the systolic is between 120 and 129. Stage 1 hypertension is defined when the systolic pressure is 130 to 139 and the diastolic is between 80 and 89, with stage 2 being reached at 140 over 90 or above. In the European guidelines, these ranges are shifted upwards slightly. The World Health Organization states that over 1.3 billion adults have hypertension, and nearly half of them are unaware that they have it. This is significant as hypertension increases the risk of myocardial infarction, strokes, aneurysms and dissections, which means tearing of blood vessels, and even dementia. Hypertension is divided into primary, also known as essential hypertension, or secondary hypertension, where an underlying condition is causing the increased blood pressure. Most patients have primary hypertension. In this case, there are risk factors that you can do nothing about, such as age and family history, or risk factors that you can adjust, known as modifiable risk factors. These include obesity, excessive salt intake, a sedentary lifestyle, excessive stress, smoking or alcohol consumption. Secondary hypertension accounts for around 10% of cases and can be caused by renal vascular disease, which is essentially a reduced blood flow to the kidney. This could be atherosclerosis within the vessel all the way up to an extrinsic compression of the vessel. The reduction in the blood flow to the kidney causes the kidney to sense that the body is volume depleted and therefore it produces renin and sets off the renin angiotensin aldosterone system leading to fluid retention and vasoconstriction both of which contribute to hypertension. Primary hyperaldosteronism is another where there is excessive secretion of aldosterone from the adrenals most commonly from hyperplasia of both adrenals but possibly due to an adrenal adenoma secreting aldosterone, termed Cons syndrome. Pheochromocytoma, which is a tumour of the adrenals secreting adrenaline, is another cause, as a Cushing's disease, hypothyroidism, obstructive sleep apnea, and medications like steroids, the oral contraceptive pill, non-steroidal anti-inflammatories like ibuprofen, and illicit drugs like cocaine. Most of the time, Primary hypertension is asymptomatic and people don't know that they have it, which is why, combined with its link to other significant diseases, is called the silent killer. Secondary hypertension may have symptoms of the underlying cause, such as sweating, headaches and palpitations in pheochromocytoma, heat intolerance and weight loss in hypothyroidism, and daytime sleepiness in obstructive sleep apnea. If the blood pressure is high enough, there can be damage to the organs, termed end organ damage. This would be known as a hypertensive emergency, which is a form of hypertensive crisis. Examples could be chest pain if the heart is damaged, blood in the urine if the kidneys are involved, and if the brain is involved, there may be headaches, confusion, and nausea and vomiting, known as hypertensive encephalopathy, or even neurological deficits if there is a stroke. We also mentioned aneurysms and dissection, which are due to damage the vessels themselves. Hypertensive urgency is also a form of hypertensive crisis, where the pressure is above 180 systolic or 120 diastolic, but there is no evidence of damage to the organs and it is mostly asymptomatic. Blood pressure is normally measured in the brachial artery and 
If the level is above 140 over 90 in the clinic, then the patient undergoes ambulatory or home blood pressure monitoring, as the raised clinic reading may be due to white coat syndrome. Additional tests may be done, such as blood tests looking at thyroid levels, electrolytes and creatinine, a urine dip looking for evidence of blood, and an ECG which may show signs of left ventricular hypertrophy. If secondary hypertension is suspected, for example in patients who despite multiple medications are still hypertensive, then further investigations like an ultrasound of the kidney, an aldosterone to renin ratio, and 24-hour urinary metanephrines are done. Lifestyle measures are considered the first line in most cases of primary hypertension. But if despite these, the pressure remains high, then according to the NICE guidelines, the first line is typically an ACE inhibitor or angiotensin receptor blocker. This is the case for people who are diabetic or aged under 55. In those older than 55 or of African American background, then a calcium channel blocker is first line. The next step is adding either a calcium channel blocker or ACE inhibitor or androtensin receptor blocker depending on which agent was started as the first line. The third step up is the introduction of a thiazide diuretic and if at this point the pressure is not controlled then secondary hypertension should be considered. It's also possible to add low dose spironolactone or an alpha or beta blocker if the potassium levels are already high. In the case of a hypertensive emergency, the general aim is to lower the blood pressure by around 25% in the first hour, and further to 160 over 110 over the next 2-6 to six hours. Normal blood pressure is targeted over the following 24-48 to 48 hours. In some cases, the blood pressure may be reduced faster, such as in an aortic dissection. Labetalol is often the first line agent in hypertensive emergency. The treatment for secondary hypertension is dependent on the underlying cause. For example, stenting or bypass in renal artery stenosis. In pheochromocytoma, there is initially medical therapy with alpha blockage and then beta blockers. This is necessary as beta blockers alone would leave the alpha receptors free to be bound by the excessive adrenaline which can precipitate vasoconstriction and a hypertensive crisis. Following this, it is usually surgically excised.